Of all great things that moved over the century, aviation stood as the most prominent. From the early biplanes to jets, from analog to this, the fancy glass cockpit that gives a whole spectrum of information for safe flight shattered the analog sound barrier with a big bang. Much of the required information that once displayed on a whole bunch of scattered dials just a few decades ago is now flashing on fancy screens neatly bundled together in a minimalist cockpit design. The new man-machine interface, which the modern cockpit conveniently has become, has not only helped display all of the required information in a centralized deal, but has also enhanced flight safety, proving to be much more cost-effective. The idea is almost the same. Pilots need information to operate their aircraft. Engineers and technicians require much of that information to monitor, maintain, repair, and or upgrade systems. By using electronic sensors, data from across the aircraft is collected and sent to display systems where symbol generators presented in a manner that can be read and interpreted in the cockpit. This in turn has had a somewhat undesirable impact. The once four or three man cockpit is now a two crew flight deck and some people hate that. After all, every one of us likes bigger windows to look through. You won't find the muscle crew of engineers and technicians on board complex jets anymore, although some still use extra hands. The explanation is quite simple. The range of information that pilots need an extra hands for is now available at the touch of a push button, and so is the response mechanism. Not only that, the need to know philosophy allows only relevant information to display for the crew to interact with. System status changes, caution, and master alarm parameters are all backed up with advisories and recommended actions and will appear to the crew as visual and oral attention getters instantly. To use as an example for this lesson, we will look at the Airbus A320 aircraft. Other aircraft systems more or less work in a similar fashion. A typically automated glass cockpit, or the EIS for electronic instrument system, consists of six CRT displays in the cockpit divided into two subsystems, namely the EFES and the ACAM. The EFES, which is the Electronic Flight Instrument System, as the name suggests, is the presentation of flight instrument information on two large screens. One of them, the Primary Flight Display, or the PFD, comprises information from the T instruments, the primary flight instruments as we discussed on the aircraft instrument lesson. The PFD receives its data from the ADERS, or the Air Data Inertial Reference System, which as the name suggests, is the airspeed, altitude, temperature, and angle of attack input from aircraft sensors and computes aircraft position. The PFD shows a lot of other information not in purview of this lesson. The ND or the navigation display receives its information from the flight management guidance system and as the name says it, is the navigation database from around the world to help pilots manage their departures, destination, and route climbs, descents, and approach phases of flight, to say it simply. Onboard equipment like the Global Positioning System, VHF Omnidirectional Range, Automatic Direction Finders are other sources of information display on the ND screen. This data from both the ADERS and the FMGS is fed into three display management computers, one of which is a backup DMC. The other two feed the captain's and the first officer's screens to process the data and generate images for information display. DMC-1 supplies EFS information to the captain's PFD and ND, while DMC-2 supplies the first officer's PFD and ND. Now let us look at the other EIS subsystems, the ACAM, which is called the Electronic Centralized Aircraft Monitoring. The ACAM receives information about aircraft health from sensors fitted throughout the aircraft to monitor the various systems, including system controls operated on the flight deck. The more critical data like engine parameters and fuel information is taken directly from the sensors to the three DMCs. Each DMC has separate channel for both the ACAM and EFIS. Keeping with the Airbus A320 aircraft, the upper central screen is the engine warning display, whereas the lower screen is for systems display. A change in the status of the aircraft systems will display immediately being constantly updated as to situational awareness against human factor complacency. Two systems, data acquisition concentrators, or the stacks, receive information from most of the onboard sensors. This information is then sent to the DMC. In turn, after processing the data, DMC-1 supplies the upper ACAM screen, which is the engine warning display, and the DMC-2 supplies the system's data screen. DMC-3 acts as the backup. Like the stacks, two identical flight warning computers sit in the system and receive data from aircraft system sensors to generate red warnings. The stacks generate amber cautions and feed them to the flight warning computers. 
The flight warning computers then supply the DMCs for the display of alert messages, attention getters, and loudspeakers for oral alerts and synthetic voice messages. A switching panel forms part of the system, the recall push buttons and other knobs and switches. The stuff is exciting and the more you know about its complexities, the greater you want to know. So get to it, look at the circuitry details of the system and understand its logic. You will want to specialize into the EIS since there is a lot more of this stuff to be had. Blue skies.